بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء وأشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم يقول الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نار وقودها الناس والحجارة أو هو يوضي Protect yourselves and your families. And obviously, if we protect ourselves and our families, it extends beyond that. But we should protect ourselves and our families, our relatives, from the hellfire, which will be fueled by people and rocks. And the Prophet said, "Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum masulun al ra'iyat." The Prophet said, السلام, that all of you are in charge or in a position of authority or in a position of responsibility and you are responsible and accountable for those people who are underneath you, so to speak, or you are in charge of. From this perspective, I'd like to talk to you about something that I've discussed many times with different brothers and some sisters on a personal level. How we live fake and pretentious lives, how we live fictitious lives, how we live mythical lives, or how at least we aspire to do so. If we count the media outlets, and I'm sure to me at least I cannot account for all of them because there are just so many of them, but I'll count a few. On TV we have sitcoms, on TV we have shows, on TV we have a lot of different things, soap operas, dubbed soap operas, uh, movies, we have the theater, we have the movie theater and the regular theater where live people perform, we have different applications on smartphones, WhatsApp, Facebook, online, we have Snapchat, we have many different things that show us a side of life that we are not living or we may not be living its reality ourselves but we do see it I'll sum up a few things that they portray on those media outlets for us to believe financial security is the utmost important thing in our lives that's what we should aspire to achieve Financial security. And who, who are those individuals who are financially secure? A lot of them that we see on TV are sports individuals. We see singers. We see dancers. We see the same line of people who are rich and famous. Actors, for example. So they show us this side, which we could call the Hollywood side, where this is not the life that we are living, but this is the life that we should aspire to live. This fake life. The good life is having a lot of money. The good life is having a boat, a yacht. The good life is having a mansion, a private plane. The good life is having luxury cars. That is the good life that they try to portray on the media outlets. Now, we cannot deny that some people are wealthy, some people have those possessions, but we don't know whether they are happy or they're living the good life according at least to our Islamic principles. On the media outlets, they show us that the role models that we should aspire to become like, and the older generation may not really see this, but if you speak to the younger generations, your children, you will see it. What would you like to become when you grow up? I want to be a soccer player like Messi or Ronaldo. I want to be a basketball player like LeBron James or Stephen Curry. I'd like to become a billionaire like LeBron or the former best basketball player according to ESPN, Michael Jordan. 
I want to become a famous pop star like Michael Jackson. I want to become... Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're not asking non-Muslim children these questions. What do you want to become when you grow up? We're asking Muslim children. That's what they largely see on media outlets. How wealthy this sports person is. How wealthy this singer is. How wealthy is this actor? How wealthy that actress? And they aspire to become like that. That became the role model for a lot of Muslims, unfortunately. Both male and female in different age categories. They also tell us that winning is everything, by all means necessary, regardless how you get there as long as you win. When I was growing up and we used to play soccer with other kids, we didn't want to win, we just wanted to have a good time. Now we want to win. We want to win the game. Even if we cheat, even if we break other people's bones, even if we break the rules of the game, but we only want to win. So no matter what we do, winning justifies what we do. Isn't this what they show us on TV? And I'm not saying this is the only thing that we see on media outlets, but this is becoming a trend that winning by any means necessary, as long as you don't get caught, and those people who follow soccer, they would understand what I'm talking about now, taking a dive inside where the goalkeeper is so you can get a penalty kick without being even touched. And there's one soccer player who is notoriously known for this. Uh, his name escapes me right now. Rivaldo Ronaldinho, one of, one of those... Neymar, sorry. You touch this player and he would just keep rolling and falling just because he wants to get a penalty kick. Is this even ethical? Is this what we are learning from sports people that cheating is okay as long as you don't get caught? Because the ultimate purpose is winning? What else are we learning from them? From WhatsApp and other groups like this, Facebook. Be the first person to share this news, even if it's fake news, even if it's unreliable news, even if it's invalid information, even if it is unconfirmed information, just go ahead and share it. For the fifth time over the past one year, I did a clip of a video from a Saudi sheikh in Saudi Arabia where he gave the introduction to his khutbah by saying today will be the last day for anyone who's not a Saudi to come to this masjid. But he had a point he was trying to make and the only clip that people started broadcasting was that, Sheikh Al-Hadhi. It was just the opening to his sermon, to his khutbah. People clipped that took that one little piece and started talking bad about this sheikh. Be the first to, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, look at the sheikh, what he's saying about people. Look at this Saudi bad person, look at the, I'm not saying there aren't people who do bad things in Saudi Arabia, but do we even confirm or verify the information that we share on Facebook and other media outlets? A good husband shows his love and affection to his wife 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So left and right, I love you honey, I love you baby, I love you mine. That's what we see on TV. And what we see about the wives, we see that they are, they look as pretty as they were when they got married when she was 18. Same shape, same figure, same everything, same loving, same, 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 same. This is not reality. This is fake. But we aspire to live that fake in our real lives. And when it doesn't work out, we start blaming the whole world for our own shortcomings. We started hating other people because of what we see on TV. How many women got divorced, and these are real cases by the way, how many women got divorced because they fell in love with a TV character called, and the Arab people know what I'm talking about, Muhammad. A Turkish drama. I never watched it, but we started hearing and reading about cases where women got divorced because they fell in love with this Muhammad. He is a great person. This is how husbands should be. Sister, this is a fake character on TV. He's not real. How many men divorced their wives because of this other TV character called Noor? A Turkish character in a Turkish sitcom. 
Noor is so beautiful. Noor, look at my wife, this ugly wife now. After 25, 30 years of marriage, your wife becomes a bad wife. Why? Because you believe what is on TV to be real. And it is not real. How come we don't have a mansion like they do? How come we don't have cars like they do? How come we don't have money like they do? How come the kids say, how come we don't have a PlayStation or a Nintendo or a this or that like they do? We want to live the lives of other people. We want to have it all. And the media outlets are not making our lives any easy. We believe what's on TV to be real. Where in fact it's not real. A lot of it is not real. Especially when it comes to sitcoms and drama and what have you. How many men started disliking their wives because they started watching a Syrian TV so-called Bab al -Hab? Why? Because how the women, their accent is so nice and sweet and how they treat their husbands. And they start looking at their wives. She doesn't sound cute. She doesn't look pretty. The wife of 20, 25, 30 years that gave birth to 10 of your children and went through so much to make this family a successful and a great family, all of a sudden becomes a bad wife. Why? Because you saw someone acting on TV and believing that it's real. How much of what we see on TV is Real. We have started trying to live this fake life that we see on media outlets that we started hating and disliking and being displeased with our own lives. We started looking at what they have that we don't have and we became envious. Kufr al -Nama. We became envious because they have and we don't have. Instead of looking at what we have and they don't have and being appreciative and being pleased with the ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we have become envious of what they have and that we don't have. What is wrong with the car that you have? It's a car. It runs. It doesn't have to be a luxury car because the car's purpose is taking you from point A to point B. You're going to still stop at the same traffic lights. Whether you have a 1984 Honda Civic or you have a 2019 Mercedes S550. You will stop at the same traffic lights. You will still take the same roads. And it will most likely take you the same amount of time as anyone else driving on that same road that you are driving on. Whether you fly first class or you fly, fly business class or you fly economy, the same plane is going to take off from the same place and it's going to land, inshallah, in the same place. Doesn't matter which. Now this is not to say that we shouldn't live a good life and enjoy the riches that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, based on what the Prophet said, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to see the, 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 the results, the outcome, the consequences of his ni'mah on his people, on us. There's nothing wrong with enjoying it. But if I can't afford to live that life, be happy with the life that you have. Because eventually we fall into the pitfall of kufr and na'ma, and we start becoming displeased with our lives. We become envious of our lives. And by the way, one question that we all should ask ourselves, why is the divorce rate, especially among the Muslim ummah, on the rise? Why? What's the reason? Why is it, and this is, this is someone I know personally, after about 45 years of marriage, his parents got divorced. It's true that one of the signs of Judgment Day is an increase in the rate of divorce. But shouldn't we be looking at the reasons for that? How much are we glued to our tablets, to our smartphones, to our 
TVs, and by the way, TV used to be only like five stations and you have to have the area for it. This is when I was growing up. I mean, you probably would never even know what I'm talking about unless you Google it and do research. But most of us live that life. Live that generation with only like four or five, six TV stations. Now we have programs and stations that can last forever. The last thing that I'd like to say is this. Be happy with what you have. And be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ayah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it for us. رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعِنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامَ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ رَحِيمَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ وَلَطُرْ رَحِيمُ والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته